Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There have been a number of recent developments that point to far-reaching changes to the architecture of South Africa's electricity supply industry. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the implications. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Firstly, the Electricity Regulation Amendment Bill has been published for public comment. Yes, this bill has been expected for quite some time. And it basically reflects some of the changes that are underway in the electricity supply industry, notably uh, the end of the vertically integrated business model or the operational model that we have all grown up with that's been in place for many, many years and basically has had Eskom monopolizing not only generation but transmission and distribution as well, along with the municipalities at the distribution level. So this sort of aligns to a a new market model, a multi-market model, where there are going to be multiple players, particularly in the generation and distribution space, with a monopoly business sort of in between, or, or sort of running the wires. And we can see that that's uh, how the rest of the world has evolved over the, a number of years. It is also very much aligned to the energy transition, where you have a lot more uh, distributed generators. And the other thing that this bill caters for is this transmission system operator. Uh, and it very much explicitly outlines the role of that and it makes it clear that this, will, this transmission system operator will be responsible for the physical assets as well as the operation, the market operation. Uh, so it's a bit in line with the system and market operator bill that was canned a few years ago. So we've sort of revised that uh, approach where we'll have a system and market operator as well as a transmission company uh, operating the physical assets. In parallel, changes are underway at ESCOM to align it with this new market structure. Yes, there's very major changes in the structure of ESCOM underway. This has been happening in parallel with trying to recover the operational performance of ESCOM, uh, trying to recover the financial uh, uh, quagmire that ESCOM's in, as well as to deal with the corruption. So this is a major corporate restructuring taking a, a place at the same time as all these other things are taking place. And basically what it involves is the ring fencing of the generation, transmission and distribution businesses into separate businesses. The setting up of these as legal, legally separated entities under Eskom Holdings. And uh, that process has been underway for some time now and we see that the national transmission company South Africa has been formally formed uh, in December. It isn't operational yet, it requires a license from the regulator, it requires this regulatory or uh, legislative framework to be in place, and it also requires bondholders which have given Eskom money to you know, be satisfied that their, their debt is secured. So there's a lot of engagement underway with the bondholders, uh, Eskom's creditors, to assure them that even with the restructuring that the, the debt uh, that is owed to them is still guaranteed and still forms, uh, uh, is sort of is still whole in, in many ways. Uh, th that um, process is still underway and I think over the course of the year we'll see the, the formal separation of this uh, national uh, transmission company South Africa into an independently operated business with an independent board but still fall, falling under Eskom Holdings to deal with this legacy debt issue. There are also proposed changes to the country's electricity pricing policy. Yes, so the Minister Gwede Mantash didn't only release the uh, regulation amendment bill for public comment, but also a review of the electricity pricing policy. That's also been long awaited. As we know, the, the pricing policy has been a contentious issue for many years. Uh, it really hasn't really been implemented since the last pricing policy, which said we had transitioned to cost-reflective tariffs within three years and that never happened. We still aren't there and that was all uh, back about a decade ago. But still this review is important and also outlines this more ring-fenced approach to the different uh, aspects of the supply industry, value chain, the generation, the transmission and distribution. It makes clear about uh, the difference between energy charges, which is the kilowatt hour charges, and capacity charges, especially as we transition to a more variable renewable energy uh, position where the grid is going to be used as well as other mechanisms to back up that variable electricity and those charges have to be clear to the consumer and have to be fair 
and transparent, and I think it does make a case for that. Uh, but the principles remain from the old pricing policy, which is cross-reflectivity, and in this case, a transition to that in five years, uh, if approved. And then uh, also the issue of non-discrimination between customers. But it does cater uh, for cross-subsidization, um, and it has a specific section around cross-subsidizing the most vulnerable consumers. And that, I think, will be a major focus as this goes before the public for comment and possibly uh, lawmakers. What are these developments telling us about the future of the country's electricity industry? I think the main message is that the transition is now underway and is unstoppable. We are moving in a certain direction where the monopoly structure of the electricity supply industry, that vertically integrated structure monopolized by one company, Eskom, is on the way out. And we are going to be entering a new era where, especially at the generation end, there's going to be a lot more uh, participants. And these participants are either going to be very big, like the Eskom power stations, like a nuclear plant, and they're going to be very small, right down to your solar rooftop, uh, uh, which the pricing policy actually mentions this net, uh, net metering ability to sort of feed back into the grid. So the prosumer comes to the fore. So it basically is a signal that we are starting to catch up with the transition that's happened around the rest of the world and is starting to happen by default in South Africa, given that Eskom can no longer supply the electricity we need, not generate it, doesn't have the money to build the power plants, so we need others to come in with that money. We need to have a, a level playing field, therefore we need an unbundled national transmission company, which I think is underway and we'll see that operationalised hopefully during the course of this year. And then at the distribution end, there's going to be changes too. Um, municipalities, some are not in the position to really play that role as effectively as they should, and it's made uh, part of that system almost the weakest link, and that has to be dealt with. So there's, there's scope to, for consolidation potentially, but obviously there's that constitutional requirement that allows municipalities to play that role, so we'll have to see how that gets navigated. But basically, the message is that South Africa is catching up with a structure that is more fit for purpose for the evolving nature of this electricity supply industry. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.